I was today years old when I learned that you can create enums in a database. And in this video, we're going to learn about enums in DuckDB. We'll learn how to create them, why we need them, as well as some neat innovations DuckDB has made compared to other databases. We're going to start in the Python shell. So we'll import DuckDB and then we're going to create a couple of databases. And we're going to use one of them uh, where we use enums and then the other one where we won't. Uh, we're going to be using the uh, recipes, this recipes data set from Kaggle. So it's got 2 million recipes and it gives you them as a big CSV file. So if we now come back to the terminal, we're going to query this file just using db1. Uh, so we're going to use the read CSV auto function. We'll pass in the name of that CSV file. We'll tell it that it's got a header and we'll just get the first row. And then we're just going to do a little bit of manipulation of the results. So they're a little bit easier to see. We're using this text wrapper uh, class and then we'll just print out the name of the column and then the value and we're sort of just wrapping it so that it, it sort of doesn't <laughs> is a bit easier to read and you can see we get back if we scroll to the top you see we got the title we've got the ingredients directions uh, link source and then, and then a couple of other fields as well and from the perspective of enums it looks like source and site might be promising because they likely have many values there can't be that many sources and maybe can't be that many <laughs> hopefully recipe websites either let's now create uh, that table. So we're going to do that in, in DB1 and we're just going to have everything stored as just as the default uh, value here. So except for the NER, we'll, we'll cast that to be an array. And if we describe the table once it's been created, we can see that every field is a varchar. So that's going to be our baseline to compare against. Let's now explore the source and site fields to see how many unique values we have. Uh, we're going to start with source. So let's write a query that just gets the source and how many entries there are for each of those sources. And you can see if we run that query, we get back the results. We can see there are two. So we've got gathered and then we've got recipes 1M. And there are about 580,000 for recipes and then 1.6 million for gathered. There are then two ways that we can create an enum. The first is where we hard code the available values, which we can do uh, here since we, we only have two. And so what we can do is we can, we're going to do this on DB2. And what we'll do is we'll say create type sources enum. So that bit stays the same. And then we can specify th those values. So gathered from recipes 1M. After we've done that, we can then call this enum range function, uh, pass in null colon, and then sort of colon colon and, and cast that to source. And it will give us back a list of all those, the values for that enum. And so you can see it, it just gives us back the same values, right? So we've got gathered and then we've got recipes 1 million. What about for the site column? So let's write an, a similar query, but this time we'll count how many sites there are. And you can see this time we've got 28 distinct values. And if we scroll up, we can see we've got cookbooks.com, food.com, epicurious.com, and a bunch of other recipe websites. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't fancy typing out those 28 values manually. But luckily, we don't have to. We can instead specify that the enum values come from a query. And so the way that we do that, so let's create that one. So we'll go db2.sql, create, uh, create type site as enum. And this time we can say we're going to read from the CSV file. We'll get the distinct sites and make sure that the site is not null. So you can't put a null value in an enum or you'll get an exception. Uh, we'll let that run for a, for a couple of seconds. And then again, we can use our enum range function to have a look at the values. And you can see it gets cut off after a few, but we can see we've got cookbooks, we've got all recipes, we've got food.com, and then we've got a few others as well. Now let's create the recipes table in DB2. And this time we're going to cast those fields to our new enum type. So you can see we can say we're going to go cast the source. Uh, again, we'll leave the, the NER as a varchar, array, an, a varchar array. And then we'll cast the site as site. And it, DB automatically does this uh, coercion from a varchar to the enum. If we then describe the recipes table, you can see that we've got those, the, those column types have been changed. We've got a source and we've got a site. Now that we've done all that, let's talk about the two benefits of using enums. The first is that it restricts the values that can go into that enum column. So for example, let's imagine we try to write an insert query into the recipes uh, table for, for DB2. And we say we're going to put in the values awesome cake, an imaginary source, so that one doesn't exist, and then we'll just leave the other ones blank. And so what we'll get back is an exception. It says, hey, I couldn't convert the string imaginary source to a uint8, which is kind of not an especially clear message, but it does lead to the second benefit, which is the enum to provide a global dictionary mapping numeric values to varchars in this case. And DuckDB can then use that dictionary so that we get faster queries on enum columns. So we're just going to import a couple of functions to help us measure query speed in, millis in milliseconds. Uh, first of all, we've got the execute query function. And so that's going to run a query a certain number of times, in this case, 10, and capture the times and put that in a list. And then tabulate data is going to take in that list of times and format it into something a bit more readable. So we get the average, the, the median, the minimum, and the maximum, and so on. 
Let's start with one query. So this query is going to say, hey, count how many recipes there are from cookbooks.com. Uh, and so if we run that uh, with the first one, and then we'll run it with the second one as well, and then we can look at the times compared to each other. So you can see DB2 is about four times uh, quicker on average. So that's quite, quite a nice, nice improvement. And these, remember, these times are in milliseconds. So both of them are, are very, very quick. But as you get to a bigger data set, remember this one's two million, you'll, you'll start to see bigger improvements. Uh, and let's have a look at one more. So our second query, we're, gonna, we're not going to do any filtering. We're just going to count the number of sites. So it's actually similar to a query that we did at the beginning. Uh, let's run it for the first one. And now for the second. So there's a little bit less improvement here. So it's maybe twice as, uh, as fast. And at, at sort of at the maximum, there's hardly, uh, there's hardly any difference between the two. Uh, now, enums aren't unique to DuckDB. In fact, DuckDB gained inspiration from Postgres. But letting you create enums from a select query is a really nice innovation. I, I'm really happy with, with that one. If you'd like to learn about other innovations in DuckDB, check out this video that covers new SQL syntax introduced by DuckDB. And I'll see you in the next one.